Hello and welcome to another round table. We're joined by pastors and leaders on a pretty uh, lightweight subject, uh, the subject of worship. What exactly does it mean to us? I think worship's your life. Mm, um, yeah. Like I think uh, music's role in worship is a means to express our worship, but I think at the end of the day, worship's your life. Mm, yeah, it's mm. Music is the vehicle, right? Yeah. Mm. It's a beautiful vehicle, but it's your heart. Mm. It's your mm. heart that you're offering up. Yeah, yeah. Mm. and and when you praise in that way as well, um, it's untouchable. Mm. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm. Mm. I think it's a really intimate um, type of communication. Like you can have a conversation with someone, but worship has the ability to sort of transcend the conversation because you can just sit there mm. and you're communicating with God. You can sit yeah. there in, in peace and just the fact that you're there before him in silence is enough mm. where if we did that as human beings we would go super awkward you know you mm. can't just sit there in silence but we have a way of communicating with god that transcends the normal yeah, that's mm. yeah. what would be some of the do's and don'ts when does it cease to become worship um i feel like when it becomes a have to like you mm. sort of think i know about myself and this is like quite a vulnerable thing i am not a 5 a.m per i am now that i have sure. a son but yeah. it's that 5 a.m is no longer for god like it's, yeah. it's, I don't have that space anymore in my life, but I know that when I create space, it's mm. got to be genuine, regardless of the time of day, or even if it's just a moment in the car on the way to somewhere. Mm. When I begin to worship or begin to pray or any time with God, it's got to be because I'm hungry for it. It's not because mm. I'm leading worship on Sunday, so I guess I should. I guess I better prepare. Well, yeah, yeah, that's good. You better prepare, but... If my heart's connected with God, five minutes is gold, like over an hour or over whatever. Yeah. It's got to be a genuine connection. So for me, um, a don't is to just go, all right, God, here's my, you know, yeah. here's what my you, half an hour and hopefully you can show me something. Yeah. <laughs> you said genuine yeah. connection. What do you think mm. when worship is something that you've got to do, but mm. you're not feeling the genuine connection? Yeah. How do you yeah. like... Yeah. And that does happen. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, like we'd all be, I suppose, silly to say that that's never happened in any one of our sure. lives right. because we've right. probably all gone through those times. Mm. But I still think God can, whether that is <clears throat> on, a, on a stage in a, I suppose, a congregation setting mm. or whether it's at home, I think God can still move. He's God yes. at the end yeah. of the Absolutely. day. And yes. <clears throat> I think we, we were born in the image of Christ mm. and that's extraordinary mm. and as we go through life we go through disappointments we go through hurts and I suppose the extra the um, ordinary gets on us mm. and when we come to that place of worship and being in his presence mm. like it's that's where God exchanges that yes. ordinary for the extraordinary yeah, and exchanges that disappointment for hope mm. the mm. the sickness for healing and it and, and sometimes that is in a personal setting, but sometimes that is in a, a congregational setting as well. And mm. I think it is a, a part of our everyday totally. life journey. Totally. Yeah. Like whatever mm. we're doing is, you know, Beck said she's a mum now. I'm a mum now too, Nelly, of two children. And I think you've, you've um, got to take those times. Mm. And, and as we do our life, whether it's being a mum or being a pastor or mm. working or being in uni, then we then take that on the journey with us yes, and take right. yep. and helping and God making us extraordinary in those moments. Yeah. That's cool. I think, I think as well, like, yeah, you don't always feel like, it, particularly if you're a worship leader, you don't really have a choice whether you <laughs> want to worship God or not. But I guess the, the benefit of it is for, for us in maybe these positions is that we get trained in commanding our soul to bless the Lord yes. and we get trained in, Nevertheless, you know, yeah. I, I'm gonna, yet I'll praise him, mm, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and like it's a, it's a, it's actually of a, of a great benefit to mm. our whole life that we mm. get trained in right. going to that place of praise, whether we mm. feel like it or not, yeah. right? Yeah, totally. mm. yeah. Some people would have would have seen, well, would see it as a glamorous position <clears throat> uh, until they've done it. Uh, yes. Would think, oh, this looks yeah. pretty shiny. It's all totally you know, mm. thunderbolts and lightning. <laughs> You're in a pretty um, high-profile position. 
but that would have taken sacrifices for mm. you personally. What exactly are they specifically? What would be a sp- specific sacrifice you've had to make? The Lord, the Lord asks for us to be worshippers before he asks us to be worship leaders, mm. Mm. like yes. to pursue him, yeah. Yeah. to be disciples. So that in, in itself has sacrifices that mm. you make, but right. it's not reserved purely for the, the stage that we might be on. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so that looks like, you know, the hidden away. It looks like the living with him. It looks like the, the abiding mm. in him life. And then, and then I guess you also make sacrifices in your craft as well, because yeah. the only reason yeah. you can be in That's front right. of people on a stage is it's because hopefully you can hold a tune. Yeah. And if you couldn't, you wouldn't be in front of them <laughs> with that position. So, um, so you've got to invest in your craft as well. Right. Being in a worship team in particular, like the sacrifice of your time, yeah. um, like um, the financial sacrifice. Yeah. I, I know for all of us, I'm sure there's, there's weeks we've maybe um, you know, um, taken off from work to be at a conference or be at something to yeah. do with church. Um, and I think again, I think yeah, that the sacrifice ultimately is your your life, yeah. um, and and you know it could be dreams, desires, um, all of that. And I'm sure it looks yeah. kind of different for all of us, but um, yeah. but yeah. It's yeah. interesting. You've written some absolute crackers, yeah. <laughs> and um, people sing them all around the world, mm. and that's that's a huge privilege. But also, there's plenty of great songwriters that have written good songs that haven't ended up being mm. sung around the world. So sure. that's a huge privilege and a huge blessing. What would you say the difference is between writing? a worship song or a song for your own personal worship time or even a secular song, love song, song about a girlfriend, whatever. What's sure. the, what are the distinctions? What's, what makes yeah, it really, well, like, I know this is the obvious thing, but, you know, writing worship songs, you know, we're obviously writing um, about someone um, to someone, that person being Jesus. So, so to state the obvious thing, that, you know, that's obviously a big, um, bi- big difference. Um, I always say to songwriters, um, we write worship songs to Jesus, but we write them for the church. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, like, of course, like our, our, our worship um, and, and our songs, it's, it's about Jesus, it's to Jesus. But as yeah. far as the, the mechanics of a, of a song goes, the, the melody, the, the, the yeah. lyrics, the, the, the chords, like, um, that's, a, that's a tool to, um, to, um, to serve the body of Christ. Oh, yeah. And I think even if, right. our, I think if, our, if our creativity, um, as much as I'm, I think God's all about creativity, but even if our creativity hinders people from being able to okay. encounter yeah. Jesus, if yeah. it hinders them from um, yeah. being able to worship, then yeah. I, think, I think the song defeats the purpose. Mm. And I yeah. think the song's got to, it's, it, it's got to give voice to the church. It's got to yeah. give voice to the people. And yeah. I think that's yeah. a big, big difference in, in writing, writing worship music yeah. mm, is yes. that, um, you know, we're writing for people mm. in yes. the hope to serve yeah. people yeah. And, and give voice to people's worship. Mm. So you've got to put yourself in their shoes, mm. yeah, work out what they need. Yeah. There's a great scripture in, in Revelation. It says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit yeah. is saying to the church. Mm. And mm. I, think, I think writing a worship song is less about trying to write a worship song yeah. and more about listening yeah, and, 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 right. and listening for that small, still voice. Yeah. Like what is the Holy Spirit? What is God wanting to, right. wanting to say in his church or say to his people? Yeah. And exactly. what's he wanting to yeah. do? I love what you, how did you say that again? It's, it's, for, it's for Jesus. So it's, it's to, to Jesus, Jesus, but it's for the church. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's good. Yeah, it's and great. I think that's like, that's a lens that I would, I would think through as well. Yeah. It's yeah. like, it's gotta be, it's got to be singable, but it's also got to be sayable. Like yeah. we've got to, it's yeah. people have yeah. to participate because mm. creating something for them to join in. Yeah. So it's got to be people got to be able to sing it and mm. use it. Yeah. But it, we've also got to be saying the right things because it's That's to right. to the Lord. So mm. yeah, I've heard totally. a really cool um, take on just the idea of how you come away from a service and. It's the 90% people are going to be humming the tune and the 10% they'll remember the preach, which Fully. sorry for all you preachers. <laughs> um, but in saying that is the reason that we learn the ABCs totally. as kids yeah. via yeah. a song. Yeah. Yeah, if we right. put the word of God in somebody's, someone's hand yeah. or put, put it in their ears and in their spirit, yeah. and it's the right word at the right time, yeah. which is what you're saying, yeah. totally. then yeah. they walk away humming the tune and it's in their spirit and it's mm-hmm. flowing through mm-hmm. them through the week. And yeah. You know, yes. that's yeah, why the, the, the theology and, and mm. the doctrine mm, and the absolutely. lyrics are so important, yeah. which, which can that's be right. somewhat, I guess, subjective. Mm. Um, but um, that's why, yeah, we, we've got to make sure our songs mm. come into line with the that's word right. of God. Yeah, totally.
Fax, you've been around forever and you've had to sing all kinds of songs. Oh, definitely. <laughs> um, what has changed over that uh, well, period of time, like specifically? Specific, well. In culture, expression, song, oh, sounds, the whole thing, like what's been stand out for you in terms of the changes? I think, well, there's been a lot of, lot of change over time, but as there would be with most things, I suppose, well, we've gone from a big band, haven't we? We've come mm. from the brass days. <laughs> big choir. <laughs> Bring it back. Bring it back. back. Right. Yeah. Here we go. Next album. Suit. The yes. pants yes. suit. Yeah. <laughs> no, but there has been, and I suppose there's, there's definitely reasons for that. And Dan just touched on that mm. being the voice for the church. Like yeah. I think, you know, people mm. do come, there's a journey that happens as well with a team. There's culture. And I think with um, a different sound, there's, definitely a sound that capture, captures and emulates the church yes. and what's happening in the congregation yeah. and mm. like what Dan said being the voice of the church like mm. that's definitely something that goes in I suppose a wave um, and I suppose over time like I, I can speak for the last 18 years but of being in C3 worship is that you have seen that and you mm. have seen yeah. the different eras of culture moving mm. And, but also different people anointed in different positions yeah. and they've got a different revelation mm. in their heart as well. Yeah. And that comes out in them um, because obviously being on a worship team, like what we've all mentioned, it is our relationship with God, number mm. one. And as worshippers, that does come out of us when we, whether we're playing, we're singing, we're leading, we're wherever we are, like mm. it will come out um, mm. through what we do. Mm. And that doesn't n necessarily mean just on the stage. Like I think, mm. like again, through our whole life, through being a mum, being at uni, whatever, it comes out in mm. us. So I think the expression definitely changes because it's been different people along the way mm. and mm. also what God is doing in the church. Mm. I think what long, yeah. ultimately yeah. what mm. doesn't ever change and what should never change is I suppose the purpose mm. and why we're there. Yeah. Yeah. And Despite that purpose that. is to lift people's eyes right. to Jesus mm. yes. and whatever circumstance they're in. And like what I was saying before, they're feeling ordinary and what life has put on them and and pointing them to Jesus and and letting him do the work. And it's not it's not, you know, our job. Our job is to take That's away right. the distraction. That's right and let the spirit move mm -hmm. and let the spirit um, be freely to move in people so that they, that God can put that extraordinary mm -hmm. back in their world. They can exchange that, um, you know, sorrow for joy mm -hmm. and yes. things like that. Yeah. So awesome. yeah. it's interesting, Erica, you've been a, well, you are a church planner, but you've yes. also been a worship leader for years. Yeah. Um, and the sort of thing that Linda's talking about, mm -hmm. some people would you know, relate that to having a big band, having quality sound engineers, having brass, if you happen to like brass, <laughs> yeah, or good songwriters. We love brass. brass. We love <laughs> brass. We love brass. Um, but I suppose with you having planted a church and having to, yeah. you know, mm. like manage all that from scratch, yeah. how do you c bring a consistently great worship experience with limited resources mm. And then watch it grow over time while not compromising what worship is. Yeah, that's that's such a good question. Mm -hmm. it speaks to so many people. Um, yeah, we've we've been a part of church plants and we've started from nothing as well. So I've been able to have a lot of variation when we've when I've been forming worship and the sound within a house. And um, mm. so I I played eighteen for eighteen months the keys by myself and sang wow. and I never want to go back yeah. there. <laughs> um, wow. but what one thing that um, and I, I actually felt led to do that by the Holy Spirit to lay like an altar and a foundation right. because the mm. church was growing mm. and the sound mm. was forming. And so by the time I did that, there were quality people all around. But we also um, just I honoured the people who were in the group and in honouring them and releasing and raising them mm. up, it brought more quality yeah, people. It was like something was in the atmosphere. Mm. Something was kind of out there and what that does is attract the mm. same type of people Beautiful. and building that mm. family mm. type of feel and investing into them uh, means it's a slow build. Right. Yeah. Mm. Stuff like that happens really slowly and, and being mm. um, at ease with that and realising that 
uh, as being a part of C3, we're in a wider family. Mm -hmm. We're in a big yeah. family. If it had, uh, Reach out, hey. if it had built awesome. really quickly, would you yeah. have been nervous at all about that? Um, you know what, back then, absolutely. But that had everything to do with me and just feeling secure. That had nothing to do with how that's, that would affect the team. Amazing. Right. Yeah. Amazing.